All right, I have 10 minutes to go over a decade-long uh, global tenant management at uh, Colibra. So I'm Alex from Boxall. Um, I work, the clock is ticking, yes. So I work at Colibra as a software architect. One of my responsibilities is the tenant management system. Um, I love open source, contribute to a few of them. Um, so let's start. So in the beginning there was nothing um, before the company. Of course we had nothing. Uh, we in, started with an installer-based product that was installed on uh, on uh, the machines on prem uh, at our customers. Um, but then the SaaS world came along, and we actually went to an on-prem at scale model where we actually installed our system. Um, on thousands and thousands of VMs um, for our customers. This worked for a while. Um, it was tedious. So we wrote our own scheduler. This was a long time ago. That was before we had any of the Argo um, products. Um, but it, it worked. Um, but then, yeah, then something like Kubernetes came along. Um, the company learned, uh, did some mistakes in the beginning. We went for like a single tenancy model where each customer had their own namespace and we started kind of uh, extracting services in that namespace. We soon saw that that was kind of a bad idea and actually went for a multi-tenancy system. So we, that worked better, uh, also more resource. Uh, well, it was better on the resources because a lot of things were shared. Uh, it was a challenge though because that was our first encounter with uh, Argo CD, and we had kind of a, uh, a different model because, like, our tenants uh, were kind of uh, really managed by operations, while Argo CD actually uh, gave me more control to our uh, developers where they could roll out their, uh, their systems. But so we paused and we said, like, okay, it's fine, it works, uh, but let's, let's redesign a few things and make it better. So we paused and said, like, what are our design goals? We had our problems. One of our biggest problems is um, developer and productive uh, production parity uh, because it was so um, production engineering kind of focused. Like, they focused a, little, a lot of production, but not on develop, uh, lower environments like de development. Um, we wanted to kind of have the same mechanism. That was uh, the the main reason how the project was sold, uh, but we also wanted to kind of formalize the life cycle management of what a tenant environment is. And we want to use of the self, uh, self software like Argo products. So that was our state. So the first thing we did is like, well, let's start with introducing uh, an API. Um, still, um, even our rollout of our VMs and so was already GitOps based kind of, we had our environments there. So we built first our API on top of that so that you have an API call, you, that one actually start manipulating some Git files and then everything starts kicking in. So no new products were uh, introduced except the APIs because it's important to not do a big bang. We want to kind of slowly go to kind of the new world. So it worked, fine. We have an API, we can introduce a backstage, CICD can hook in, and our uh, CRM system actually, when our new customer on board can do API calls now, and that actually provisions some VMs. Um, that could be better, so we could actually get rid of our uh, custom scheduler and actually introduce a, uh, Argo workflows. Um, we were already using that for some of our products, so it was already installed anyway, so it was kind of a no-brainer to introduce uh, Argo workflows. Um, we're talking about the global system, so we have thousands of VMs, we have uh, regulatory requirements that um, a system is installed within a specific region, and so on, so we have dozens and dozens of clusters. So we use uh, Argo events actually to listen on events when new environments are created. And that actually kicks, out, uh, kicks off a workflow in the correct cluster. Um, 
that also, the, so all the workflows are now executing actually in the same cluster. Instead of like with our custom scheduler, we had a dedicated Kubernetes cluster running for our uh, old scheduler that can be dropped. And now everything is run in the dedicated, in the same cluster as the applications will be installed. We wanted to, as I said, like the, introduce the lifecycle events. F normally, in the beginning, our multi tenant services actually provisioned their own tenants. So, as soon as there was a new call from a new customer, automatically some data was provisioned. That works. But regulatory requirements actually pushed us to. Uh, make those lifecycle events like a deletion of a tenant, like if a customer is uh, uh, stops uh, buying our product, we need to actually delete the data. It's kind of a, a requirement, GDPR-wise, and, and other requirements. So we actually, um, those events, like when a delete of an environment was ha happened, the same mechanism was in there. Event are events picked it up, the workflow was running, and we want to make those things available. The question is how? So let's see, zoom out a bit. And um, we, what we, we wanted to give the power to the development teams in themselves. So what did we do? We actually leveraged the job template and let them in their helm charts that they deploy something, actually kind of describe what to do. Um, the nice thing about this is um, we, well, well, this is how it looks like. We have a custom annotation, so, and there's a trick, a suspend set to true. Then the normal jo uh, job scheduler of Kubernetes will not pick it up. And we actually, so we leverage that. We also have the Argo CD policy where we actually can force uh, the, the update of the job because normally a job is not really updatable. It actually, may, because developers can write that, um, they actually can reuse a lot of resources that are available and provisioned for them, like secrets and all those things. So that makes it available for them. Um, so once those jobs are written, we have a discovery step in our, uh, in our workflow. It goes to the Kubernetes cluster, go, looks at them, and actually goes back to the Argo workflow. The output of the discovery step is being picked up. And actually, then our bridge software that we wrote, it's kind of the same application everywhere. It uses that job spec, and it will create a lifecycle container. That is nothing more than actually a container being kicked off. The contract is very simple, environment variables. Environment variable sets like, okay, uh, lifecycle upsert, okay, there's something created or updated or a delete or something like that, and they write their code. It could be just a bash script for all that matters, but we, we don't care. So the bridge um, is kind of nice. Um, normally, wor workflows doesn't execute something in another namespace. We actually had that bridge executable that creates a pod, but it also gets like the logs back, so you can use the, the UI of Argo workflows to follow the logs of something running in another namespace. We saw that pattern; it was good. So our so Ansible and Terraform script, we actually adapted it to the same pattern. And now we, we're actually considering our single tenant application as kind of a multi-tenant application, but for the cloud. Um, and, and it works nicely. It's a nice contract. We extended it uh, because it was so simple for migrating in and out. We just added a secret for an S3 bucket. So uh, when we migrate from to another region or to another cloud, we now have an, a, a mechanism for that. So voila, the, and in the other region, it reads everything back. Um, we wanted to have like admin control, so each and the team could make maybe something like a dump or something like that. We now use the same mechanism, have kind of that same um, uh, annotation with some custom actions that they can execute through the API, and it will be picked up. So that it it really works nicely with that. It's a very simple mechanism, and that's it. So our future state is getting rid of the VMs. We're not there yet. 
Um, but that's it. So the Arbridge single Go application, it's not a lot of code. One for the discovery step, one for the, the bridging step, and it works. It was born out of necessity because the workflows only can execute something in the, the same namespace, and it does nothing more than just reading a job spec, create pods, wait for it, and logs everything on standard out, and it works. Voila, so I think I'm out of time. So it's very simple, easy to adapt, um, just an idea, and it works. Okay, thank you. This is a slide with all animations, so if you have a QR code, it's better than the PDF.